YouTube, my name is RS Mario here bringing you another Fire Emblem Engage video. All right, so Fire Emblem Engage comes out tomorrow or is already out depending on uh, when I get this video out because <laughs> you never know these days. Uh, but yeah, Fire Emblem en Engage is coming out soon, and these are this is five things you need to know about Fire Emblem Engage. All right, so if you don't know what Fire Emblem Engage is, it's the new Fire Emblem game coming out from Intelligent Systems. And also kind of from Gus, but they don't really tell you it's from Gus. But looking at the art style and all the anime-ish type of stuff, it's also from Gus. Um, you know what I'm saying? And it's basically kind of a... It was supposed to be an anniversary game, but COVID messed that up. So now it's coming out a little bit later. And it's looking really good. But there are five things that you really need to know before you go into the game. Now, of course, if you want to continue getting videos like this, you want to continue getting Fire Emblem coverage from me, as well as Pokemon, eventually Zelda, and anime news. Like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell button, do all that stuff that YouTube requires you to do to continue getting videos from me, as well as follow me at twitter.com slash rsmario128. Um, you can like my video tweet and share my video tweet, and I will shout you out at the end of the video. Um... You know what I'm saying? As well as check out my um, second channel, The Loot Box Hero. Got some content that's coming up over there as well. Talking about Hogwarts, Le Ho Hog Hogwarts Legacy. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? As well as some other things that I'm going to be talking about over there. It's a completely different vibe over there. Uh, subscribe because 80% of you guys are not subscribed. Let's get on into the things that you need to know. Try pressing anything, go nuts, mash them all. Is this your first fucking game? So, this game is kind of for newbies, all right? And when I say that, I'm not saying that in a negative way. I'm just saying that in the way that some of the stuff is built in this game. So, this game is what I like to call an in-between game, all right? So, the way Nintendo's business model works for Pokemon and now for Fire Emblem is there is a mobile game that brings in casual fans that just kind of want to get a taste of the fire emblem formula on the go real quick on their phones and that is fire emblem heroes it's massive it's made millions upon millions upon millions of dollars from nintendo and they want to try to parlay that audience into the main or at least some of that audience into the mainline fire emblem games so they use so they make an uh, in-between game like a pokemon you know, Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee that incorporated stuff from Pokemon Go into the main Pokemon Pokemon formula, you know, but not being so watered down that an, a regular Pokemon fan wouldn't enjoy it, even though I'm not a huge fan of those games, but still. Fire Emblem Engage is kind of like that, uh, but from what I'm seeing, it's not as watered down as something like Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee was. Uh, but it's it's just watered down enough that a a heroes fan can come in and dip their toes in, you know what I'm saying? And because it was an anniversary game, they can also play with the familiar characters that they've been playing with that have been getting released in Heroes. So I think it works out that way. Fight back! Fight back! Fight back! Defense break is one of the big new mechanics in this game that I'm actually excited and low-key a little bit scared of So defensive breaks or breaks are these things that happen with the weapon triangle uh, So if you don't know what the weapon triangle is is basically like the rock paper scissors mechanic of Fire Emblem You know what I'm saying so if you have this weapon and uh, this weapon is weak to this weapon So this person will do more damage to you and blah 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 now, with the break system, it adds more to that formula. You know what I'm saying? So basically, now, it's not just, oh, your weapon's weak to this weapon. This weapon might break your defenses if they hit you with it. So if you get a defensive break, or your, your defensive get, defenses get broken, then guess what? You can't counterattack for a couple turns, which means that they can pretty much have their way with you on the enemy phase 
Enemy phase can be hell if you can't counterattack. It's about to look like this. Fight back, nigga! Fight back, nigga! Fight back! I'm just saying, you know what I'm saying? So, but you can also do it to the enemy. So it adds an extra layer of strategy and thought to the game. <laughs> All right, so this is the big one. I was I almost was gonna do an entire video on this, but I was like, there are other things too that people need to know as well. Uh, and not to mention the Fire Emblem community is no stranger to this and it's censorship. So yeah, we back at it again with the censorship. I don't know what it is about Fire Emblem and Nintendo Treehouse, which, are, which basically is the side of Nintendo that does the localizations. But it, something always, always happens with the censorship, of, with, with, with the Fire Emblem localization where it gets censored. Uh, all the way back to the, uh, the Awakening days where they censored uh, certain, you know, summer, summer outfits, you know what I'm saying? You know, we, I don't even want to get back into the Fates debacle and how that got censored and, and, and kind of butchered in certain ways. Uh, but this one isn't as egregious. You know what I'm saying? Uh, so essentially what they did was they took some of the support conversations and they kind of changed the S rank. So it's not like, you know, you're marrying some of these minor characters. And when I mean minor, I mean like below the age of 18. You know what I'm saying? But it's more flirty or more insinuated that they might have a relationship. Or even they straight up get just friend zone. Like, oh, we really good friends until my 18th birthday, then I'm a slob on that knob like corn on the cob. Hey, yo, what the fuck? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Something like that, you know what I'm saying? Um, now, I'm kind of torn on this, mainly because I kind of pride myself on being a, like a, a, a freedom of expression person, a free speech advocate, if you will. You know what I'm saying? And so I think that when it comes to fiction, somebody should be able to tell the story that they want to tell. Unless it's like purposely spiteful, like you're purposely going at people. You know what I'm saying? Like that, that that's a little bit much. But if you just got some, some lollies in there, I mean, that's kind of fine. But then on the flip side, I'm not really into that lolly shit. <laughs> I'm just not, you know what I'm saying? That's one of the aspects of, of, of like anime culture that, that is a little bit uncomfortable for me. Uh, again, I don't believe that it should be completely scrubbed from the game, but I believe that these are fictional characters, and if people want to match them up, they should be able to match them up any way they want. Dora, you had a map the entire time? Dora thought he was toilet paper. You, you gotta save me. I have seen unspeakable things. So, uh, maps, uh, the maps in this game are going to be, some of them are going to be reused from older Fire Emblem games. Now, I've actually heard some outrage about this, uh, over the past couple of months, and I don't really understand because it's not like they're just taking three houses maps and then just shuffling them around a little bit and then putting them in the engage. They're actually going back into the Fire Emblem vault and getting older maps from older Fire Emblem games. Like, I heard that the bridge of Thracia in this is in this is in this game. And you know, Thracia 776 is in this Super Nintendo game that never got released in America. You know what I'm saying? So you've never played this map before unless you're like an old head or like a Uber hardcore that's played like the the translated ROM or something. You've never played this game before. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm excited about this. I want to get to see maps that I've never seen before, you know, and probably will never see because I might not go back and play the Super Nintendo version in this cool new art style. <laughs> All right, and the biggest thing you should probably know about this game, and it's probably one of the most contentious things, and that is this game has less social interaction in it. And for some people, this is bad. And for some people, this is good. For me, very good. All right, because even though I like the social interaction stuff from uh, Three Houses and how you got to know these characters and all the other kind of stuff, to me, it also added a lot of bloat to the game. You know what I'm saying? Because there was a lot in between battles. And the battles are the biggest part of Fire Emblem. That's what I come here for. 
I come here for the battles and the tactical skill and strategy, and then the characters are right, right below that in a second place. You know what I'm saying? So that's what I come here for. It's the battles, the characters, the story. All right, and then there's everything else. You know what I'm saying? You know, waifus is like fourth right under that. You know what I'm saying? And so Three Houses kind of had way more character stuff than it had like story or gameplay. Like the story, you had like a lot of story, but you had to play the game to get to the story, like to get to the cutscenes. You know what I'm saying? But, oh, you, oh, well, you know, you also have to go and teach the class, and you have to do the assignments, and you have to you take Bernadetta out to dinner so that you can woo her into going to your class so you won't have to kill her later in the game. And it's like, I just want to do the battles, man. <laughs> and the social stuff isn't bad. It's just, it was so much of it. You know what I'm saying? And so they've cut back on that. So this game is less persona and more fire emblem which to me is perfectly fine like i love the awakening way of doing things and just going from battle to battle to battle to battle and awakening did this perfect thing where they had you like build your relationships on the battlefield so like characters that you paired up commonly because they were a good pair or that always fought near each other or whatever because you know they were functional on the battle field would build relationships that way and it felt kind of more organic you know what i'm saying and not to mention i really don't feel like running around a school or a, 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 an area again you know what i'm saying like even though the somnial which i have a video on that if you want to learn any details about the somnial is there you can still do that but in the in in three houses where you kind of had to go through and do all the school stuff and and you had to go and find an owl feather wing so you could give it to this person so they could build bonds with you so you could bring them. Like, look, look, I, I don't want to do that. <laughs> I just want to battle. Let, let me battle, please. So that's about it for this. Uh, so I, I've, I've talked long enough. It's time for us to get ready for Fire Emblem. Um, I should be able to pick up the game tomorrow. If I can't pick it up, it's probably going to be Saturday. But I will be streaming the game right here on this channel. So stay tuned for that. Like, comment, subscribe. And as always, people, keep it real.